Hello again. Uh, welcome back to Let's Play Pool of Radiance. Uh, I am Old Dragon, and uh, well, when I left you, I was at a shop, and uh, I was getting ready to go train. So here I am outside the training hall. Uh, let's go ahead and enter. Notices for teachers and students are posted on the walls. A note directs magic users and clerics to, the, to go north, and fighters and rogues to go east. So I'm facing east, fighters and rogues are through here, and clerics and mages go up there. Now, uh, I was looking at my characters. Um, she's nowhere near going up any levels. Um, of course, wizards advance the slowest, still needs just over 250 experience, so she can't do anything. Now, everyone else can. So, now, um, a sign on the wall directs magic users to go through the east door and clerics to go through the west door. So, now, it, what you can do here is, um, you, know, you go in, we train only clerics here. Do you want to train? Yes. So, I can train my cleric should go up a level, gain hit points. Um, of course, the hit points are random. In this game, I really hate that, especially because uh, if you start new characters in a later game, you can do a modify and max out their hit points. So, uh, I tend to be very, very bad and cheat and modify my characters so they get max hit points each each uh, level. Um, so. It's kind of a up to you guys if you want to do that, if you just want to let it go. And of course, there's always the option of save, train, ooh, didn't get max hit points, reload, train, ooh, didn't get max hit points, reload. So, you know, I mean, the way I do it is just a lot faster. Um, so, I might as well you what I'm talking about. Let me save it as A. Um, I'll train. Elman Dredda will become a level 2 cleric. Do you wish to train? Yes. Congratulations. And see now she has 16 hit points. So I'm going to save as B and you guys are going to get to see just how dirty of a cheat I really am. So let me exit to DOS, quit to DOS. This is an um, interesting chat program I found a really long time ago. Um, let's see, look, copyright 1993. Um, I even tried figuring out if this guy was still around, and as far as I can tell, he isn't. Um, so, here we go. Here's my Pool of Radiance game. Um, let me modify it so that I can find my appropriate character. And that one is going to be four. So, yeah, Curdet uh, for character data, B4, fourth character in save B. Uh, item, I've never been able to figure out how to hack, uh, modify that. Um, so, I can go in here. There we go. Uh, name length, name. Uh, here's your stats if you want to give them higher ability scores. Uh, and yes, I will do that once I dual class them into fighter. Um, it, here's an interesting thing. You can actually set your memorized spells. Uh, so if you want to have a lot of fireballs, you can have a lot of fireballs. Um, display cat class is what I was talking about. One of the things I was talking about before where you can actually set them uh, as monk. Um, and this is just the display class. This is just what it will say, where it will say monk. Zero is clearly cleric because that's what Elmandretta is. Uh, here's my max hit points, so 20. That's maximum for a second level cleric with an 18 uh, constitution. Um, here you can see my, mod my memorized spells. Here you can see what I know. I do not know any wizard spells, but if you want to give yourself some wizard spells, you can. Um, so yeah, there's quite a bit in here, and you should see the uh, uh, higher level um, 
or the saves from later games. I mean, they get really big. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Um, there's your thief skills. Um, this sets whether or not they're an NPC. Really weird. I mean, yeah, if you set that, you know. Uh, what else do I got? Yeah, uh, this is clerical level. Oh, actually, I should modify that since I can confirm that right now. Huh. Alright, uh, this is, I think, druid level. Um, since druids aren't actually in the game, I can't verify it. Uh, paladin level, ranger level. Again, they're not really implemented, so you can't do anything about it. Monk, um, original gender, modified gender. Um, I've never encountered the item, but this leads me to believe that they intended to put in a girdle of masculinity, femininity. Uh, like I said, I've never encountered it. I do not know if it's actually in there, but the fact that they put this in the save means that they plan to. Uh, you can say you're a character alignment. Um, a lot of these do not actually change. Uh, and you can see that this base AC is not actually saved as plain text like most of the other stuff. Um, I've never really been able to effectively modify it, but I never really tried. They're really, you know, you, you can um, max out your dexterity and, and find items, so, you know, no real need to. Um, uh, all of these that say variable means that I've never figured out what they are. Um, and you can actually change your character's combat icon colors through here. Um, really complicated, not worth it doing, but if you really want to. Uh, let's see what else we got. Anything else interesting to show you? Um, again, encumbrance, this you can modify it, but it recalculates it every time. So, um, Status is one of those things that you'd need to look at. Uh, zero is good, um, means you're alive. Combat ready status means that, again, you're alive. You can enter combat if you set it to zero. You know, even if you're at zero here, meaning you're alive, you'll show up as a dead character in combat and you can't do anything. Uh, charmed enemy. Um, I never really encountered that. That's auto combat. Um, uh, like I said, status would be whether you're poisoned, whether you're petrified, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. What else? Oh, yeah, current hit points. I need to set that to 20 so I don't have to heal. Um, and again, you know, if you modify your current plus to dice, current damage dice, current number of dice, it resets it back to... Uh, what it should be based on your weapon, so you can't really modify that. You can modify your base stuff, and I have played with that, and I have had a character do uh, um, 20, 20 plus 20 points of damage. Yeah, so anyway, this is how I cheat in that, in those games. Um, so, back to pool around. Start. It's an interesting little program. I've never, I, I have not been able to find it online, you know, recently, and I have not been able to find any um, of the hack files, uh, which is a little frustrating, because I would have thought that someone else would have made made these things by now uh, for a lot of these games that I like, and um, I would like to not have to spend all the time doing all this that other people have probably done. Although it is kind of fun. Um, Alright. So, let's go in here. The room is filled with dueling pairs. The arena master asks if you wish to duel. The duels are evenly matched and normally not to the death. Do you duel? Um, so what this does is it pits you against a character with the exact same stats as you. Same memory spells, same uh, um, weapons, same damage, same armor class, everything. Uh, you cannot take their items afterwards, um, but you do get experience based on how powerful your individual character is. So it, it is one way to get someone, you know, a single individual up um, to higher stats, 
but um, if you really want to make sure that you win, you need to kind of uh, finagle a little bit, like not equip your armor. Um, so remove your armor, go into the combat, they will not have their armor equipped, you equip your armor, boom, you now have a better armor class than them. It uh, doesn't work quite as well with weapons because they will equip weapons, they will cast spells, so uh, again you'd want to have like a wizard who has not memorized anything or something like that. Um, so uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, and then do you seek a partner for your adventuring? And here you can do a hireling. So let's say yes. There is a fine robber who will join you for three shares plus a pick of special items. Is this acceptable? Basically, um, you'll get uh, a thief named Robber. They will take, you know, if you do a, the share out of gold, uh, it'll divide it up um, six ways for each, you know, you'll get six plus the three shares that it says there, so nine. It'll divide it up nine ways. Each of your guys will get one, he'll get three, and he can take items from the pot. I would not recommend taking any of these people who say, plus a pick of special items. Um, what you can do is, uh, this is the only game that has implemented um, the spell uh, Animate Dead. You can hire someone, get them killed, animate them, and, ta and bring them along. And then you, and you have a zombie with you. It's kind of hilarious. But anyway, uh, no. Would you like to consider someone else? No. So, there's a bunch of different people. You can't take any of their stuff, so, you know, uh, it's kind of frustrating in that regard, because some of them have magical items, and you never see what they take. It all just disappears. Uh, and you have to give them cash if you want to train them. So, it's, although at that point, usually, you're, you've got plenty of money. So, anyway, sign on the north door reads fighters. So let's go in here. We train only fighters here. Do you want to train? Yes. And we'll train. Alt will become a level 2 fighter. Yes. Okay. Oh, nice. Crow max out on hit points right away. Hmm. Alright, so again, save it, B. And I'm going to go max out their hit points. Uh, but you don't need to see that, so I'm going to pause the uh, video. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back. All my characters have maxed out their hit points. And we'll go back to uh, the actual playing of the game. Alrighty. And you get a bothered by this jerk every time. Nope, nope. So, going back into the slums, and you get to see the same sound. You, you, you see that every single time you enter the slums, even after you've cleared it. It's kind of funny, but anyway. Alright, um, I'm going to pause the uh, video again as I get to uh, someplace closer to uh, an actual location. Alright, and we're back. And uh, if you're wondering where I am, I am there. Yeah, there's a little door here, a uh, shop of some kind, so let's go in. I don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, seated at the table is a ragged old woman. She greets you. Welcome. For the price of a few coppers, I will tell you your fortune. What do you do? Well, let's pay. The woman's, hand, the woman's hands make mystic passages while she mutters some words. Her voice undergoes a strange transformation. Blood and violence are writ boldly in your future. Look for friends where you expect enemies, and enemies where you expect allies. The telling is finished. What do you do? Ah, eh, leave. Oh, pfft. surprised party of kobolds. Anyway, uh, that's about it for this uh, session, this episode. Uh, I will pick this up uh, after I take care of these kobolds. Alright, I'll see you in the next episode.